Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, aka Story, and today I want to talk to you about a trail that I think is getting a little bit more popular these days, and that's the West Highland Way in Scotland. <laughs> Day one, completely soaked, feeling fabulous. This was actually the first trail that I ever long distance hiked. It was my very first experience with anything like that. I'd only been a day hiker before, and I did it in 2016, the first time. Now after I finished, I decided, hey, maybe I should give up on that dream of the Appalachian Trail. Maybe I'll just never through hike. Well, I changed my mind and in 2018 I threw hiked the AT and then I threw hiked the LT in 2019. And when I moved to Scotland for grad school, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to hike the West Highland Way again, see what it's like another time. And I did it last year in 2020. There are some things that you should know about this trail if you want to have a successful hike and a fun hike, because that's what matters, right? So I just want to give you some tips on how you can do that. And this is going to be different for everybody. Hike your own hike as always. But let me just try and give you a little bit of advice here. This trail is almost 100 miles and it has no intense climbs. But please do not be fooled by the elevation profile. You're going to look at it and likely think, this is not going to be difficult. I can handle this in just a few days, whatever. I know I was used to doing big mile days on certain parts of the AT, but this is kind of a different ball game. So just don't let it fool you. Day three. Demoralized is still a good word. You're going to want to try to plan for a week when you know what the weather will be like. Now I know that doesn't really make sense. Having lived in Scotland for a year, I can tell you, you never know what the weather's going to be like. It can say one thing in the morning and you can get all dressed and ready to go out to the hills and then it can be a complete downpour by the afternoon and it was never on the forecast. But it just happens. It's Scotland. So if you're coming from far away, and I know it's hard to plan if you're planning flights and all that, but just try your very best. If there's a week where you see that it's going to be downpouring every day, like it actually says that on the forecast, maybe think about another week. You might catch some sunshine. It does actually happen. It is rare in Scotland, but sometimes there is sunshine. You're going to want to have a map and or the Gut Hook app. Now I used Gut Hook on the LT and the AT, and it is a wonderful GPS app. They have the West Highland Way available now. But the first time I did the West Highland Way, all I had was this paper map. And I got this when I signed up with a company called AMS Outdoors and they are a company who will move all of your baggage from one hostel to the next. So the first time I did it I was staying at hostels because I didn't have the gear to go camping. And they gave me this map and it's actually really, really useful and I had no experience with any kind of navigation but this helped me so much. Um, of course, now I'm addicted to gut hook, so I like to see my little dot moving along the elevation profile. But back in 2016, this was great. And all of the, um, all of the markers on the West Highland Way are guideposts because there aren't enough trees for, um, for blazes. So you're going to see guideposts with little symbols that look like a thistle inside a compass, sort of. But sometimes these can be few and far between, as we know on most trails. The markers, uh, they are not always there when we want them to be there. So you can get a little bit freaked out at certain points. It's definitely worth it to have a map, to have GPS. Just don't get lost. You probably won't get lost. It is very easy to take the train from pretty much anywhere in the UK and take it to Mulgai, which is spelled Milngavy, but it's Mulgai. And you can start the trail from there. That is where the trailhead is. It's in the center of the town. And I really recommend that you do your first resupply right there at the grocery store in town. It's super easy. Then you just walk out to the trailhead and you get right on the path. Super easy. You can also easily get a train from the terminus in Fort William to anywhere you need to go. So when I was living in Edinburgh, I finished the trail in Fort William, took it to Glasgow, changed trains, got back home. Just a few hours, very, very easy. 
you'll want to allow around five to nine days for this hike. Now this is going to vary from person to person. Um, you'll want longer if you want to really stop and enjoy the scenery because something I have to tell you is that in this case, the trail itself is nothing special. It's very flat most of the way um, and you'll probably grow to be very frustrated with how rocky it is but the scenery around you is really pretty. So you'll want to have time to take breaks, sit by Loch Lomond, enjoy the view, and if you're the type who wants to go into towns, do some things there, and maybe go to the pubs, then definitely give yourself more than five days. Um, I did this hike in six days last year, and I did it in nine days the first time. They were both brutal in their own way. Stay at hostels if you can and if you want to, definitely stay at the hostels. Now as I said, I wasn't camping the first time that I did this because I didn't have the gear. So I stayed at hostels the whole way and the hostels in the UK in general are just fantastic. They're so nice, they're so well kept. And on the trail, there's a really, really special one. It's the Roerdenen Youth Hostel and it is right on the banks of Loch Lomond. And let me tell you, there is no view like it on the trail. It's so, so serene. There's like this beautiful green meadow and there's a dock and there's the water and you can see from the common room in the hostel, you can see this stunning view of Ben Lomond right there, which is the mountain or Munro. And I just loved it so much. I didn't even want to leave that place, especially with my blisters. I didn't want to keep hiking after that but stay at the hostels and Drover's Inn in Inverarnon is a really nice place to stay as well because Inverarnon, that area, there, it wasn't really easy to find a place to wild camp. So there's the inn and then there's also some camping pods there. Ooh, that's cool. This is really cool. Into uh, Inverarnon. Be prepared for cold at any time of year. Welcome to Scotland. It can be cold in the middle of July, sometimes during the day, but usually at night. It can get very, very cold unexpectedly. So I know, I know it's summer, I'm a Floridian. And even the second time I hiked this, I underestimated the cold. So bring that puffy, bring the hat, just be prepared for it. The rain never hurt anyone. Be prepared for constant rain and wet feet. So you're going to want to have extra socks, absolutely everything waterproof that you own. Because again, Scotland, it really rains all the time. I mean, I thought it was bad in uh, on the AT. Sometimes it would rain for a couple weeks at a time. But Scotland is its own unique creature and it truly can just drizzle forever. So the first time I did the trail, I really lucked out and it was like glorious sunshine and beautiful weather, cool temperatures the whole way. But last year, much like the year 2020, it was an absolute mess. And uh, it was raining from the moment I stepped foot on the trail at the trailhead. And it did not get much better from there. So all of my gear was just begging me to stop and it's very lucky that I had a good pack so that everything in there didn't get wet. Be prepared for the weather. Something I should add about wet weather is that you can actually find drying rooms along this trail in the hostels. I don't know if you can use them if you're not staying at the hostels but it doesn't hurt to ask. Now I love these drying rooms. They're just like hot rooms that suck all the moisture out of your gear. Put newspaper in your boots too. It helped so much. Um, so after I had done the West Highland Way and I used the drying rooms and like lived for them, they really helped me. When I did the AT, I couldn't believe I couldn't find any drying rooms anywhere. Is that not a thing here? I don't know, but they're absolutely wonderful. Take advantage of them because your gear is gonna be completely soaked if you have the same luck that I do. Now this is the thing that is probably the most important point I can drive home to you about this trail. It is extremely rocky. Now, if you thought Pennsylvania on the AT was bad, oh, you have another thing coming. 
After doing the West Highland Way, I thought Pennsylvania was nothing. I was like, what is everybody talking about with the rocks? Are you kidding me? <sighs> the West Highland Way is pretty much, I'd say like 90% just rocks. It is like loose, gravelly, poke you in the bottom of the foot, different size, different shape, rocks. That's just what the path is. I think probably because it's badly eroded. Uh, it is extremely brutal. And because almost all of the trail is flat, it's just like constant trudging on these uneven rocks. And by the end, you might have tenderized meat feet. That was my problem both times. And everybody that has hiked it that I know, we were all wearing different shoes. We all had the same problem. It turns out this trail is still really difficult. And I've got tenderized meat feet, but we found a really beautiful spot. So it'll probably happen to you, just be prepared for it, but your feet will recover in a day or two after the trail. It's just, they're gonna be really tender while you're hiking. And I hiked the AT with almost no foot pain for over 2,000 miles, and then one week on the West Highland Way and my feet were crying for mercy. So just keep that in mind, there are rocks. There are some official paid campsites, but wild camping does give you a lot more options. So you just need to be aware of areas where wild camping is illegal, specifically around Loch Lomond. Wild camping is legal in many, many places in Scotland, most of the country, but there are places where you can't do it. Um, so just look into that and don't trespass anywhere. You may have heard about a certain flying, biting bug in Scotland that makes it very hard for people who love the outdoors in summer to actually be outdoors, and those are midges. Now, in my experience, I think midges are less annoying and less painful than the black flies that I encountered on the long trail. Those really tore me up. The midges will bite you and they will um, fly around your head and lick your eyeballs and all that good stuff. So bring a bug net, just have it. It's the worst, they're really bad around sunset and it's the worst when you're trying to set up your tent with a bunch of flies swarming your face. Um, so bug net, bug spray, be aware. It's an unavoidable thing in Scotland. It's such a beautiful place, but we do have to put up with things like the midges and be aware of ticks as well. If you're gonna be outdoors pretty much anywhere, be aware of ticks and know how to get one off of you if you see it on you. Always check yourself for ticks. I didn't have any myself, but they are definitely out there. This is a fun one. Go swimming in Loch Lomond if you have the opportunity. Now, it's going to be absolutely freezing, most likely, but it's Scotland. This is part of the experience. Enjoy it. Loch Lomond is one of the most beautiful places in the world, in my opinion, and when I was staying at that youth hostel in Raridenen, I just jumped off the dock into the water. I think I lasted 30 to 45 seconds, but it was really invigorating, a wonderful way to just unwind at the end of a long hiking day. Speaking of water, there are plenty of water sources along this trail, so please don't worry about that. You'll want to bring your filtration system, whatever that is, a uh, Sawyer squeeze or tablets. I use the Sawyer squeeze myself, and there are streams all along this path. You're going to be able to find water the whole way. I never really worried about running out of water. Possibly equally as important as the fact that the trail is rocky, is the fact that it is extremely exposed. You are going to be out there in the Scottish Highlands with nothing protecting you from the elements. This trail has almost no trees on it. It's open. When I say it's open, I mean it. This is bare hills and valleys. It's gorgeous. It makes for good views. You can see for miles if it's a good day. But there are stretches, for instance, on Rannoch Moor, I think it's like 10 miles of an exposed moor where you're just trudging, it's flat, very rocky, and it's all, all open everywhere. And then you get to King's house where there's a hotel. If you need to take shelter, do it there. Because then you go up the Devil's Staircase and down the other side into Kinloch Leven. It is all completely open and there's really nowhere to hide from the elements. So if you know a storm is coming, 
and you can prepare for that and shelter somewhere, you're gonna wanna do that because being out there in pounding rain, it's never really pounding in Scotland, it's usually drizzling, but it can be. Um, being out there like that and just being completely soaking wet and freezing possibly, it's, it's not a good way to hike. And since this is such a short hike, you have the opportunity probably to not have really bad days like that because you can stay at a hostel and wait it out if your schedule allows for it. And I definitely recommend that. I got myself really ill this last time by being out in the rain constantly for days, having really wet feet and getting very, very cold. It's really easy to add Ben Nevis to the end of your trail if you want to. So when you finish the West Highland Way and you get to Fort William, you can make the choice to stay another day and climb Ben Nevis, which is the highest mountain in the UK, though in Scotland, hills over 3,000 feet are called Munros, so it is a Munro. And uh, I didn't get to do it myself because, as I said, I got myself really ill by um, being freezing and wet. and. I was not doing well, so my plan to climb Ben Nevis did not happen, but I recommend that you add it on if you feel like there was not enough climbing in this trip for you and you want to climb the highest thing in the UK. Okay, I lied. The most important tip that I can give you is go to the Green Welly Stop. Oh, this place. Don't even get me started. That's where I got this buff. And look, just look at this happy happy little fellow. The Green Willy Stop is this wonderful, miraculous oasis, which is in Tindrum, and it comes before Rannoch Moor, so it's a great place to kind of just reinvigorate yourself and get ready for the trials ahead. The Green Willy Stop, here we are, greatest place in the whole world. Hike your trash, leaving boots. Filling up on water right there, changing tape, uh, buying a fleece, standing or outstanding, um, telling people that the cafe is closed, but you can in fact get food at the restaurant right now. And also just really enjoying the hell out of this place. It is, to say the least, spectacular. Thank you, Green Welly Stop, and please keep doing what you do. If you want to do the trail in a week and you only want to resupply once, this is your place. The Green Welly Stop has absolutely everything you could imagine. It has a convenience store, it also has a restaurant, and it has an outdoor store with everything you could want. It has all this gear. Like if your boots are driving you crazy and you've got to replace them, this is the place to do it. You can get all kinds of hiking gear. They are so used to hikers being there. And I bought a fleece there because I was going to die if I didn't get something a little bit warmer for the last few days of the trail. So absolutely stop in there, eat the food, talk to the friendly people, and just enjoy it because it truly is so wonderful after being out in the elements and really working hard out there on the trail. You're going to want to stop at the Green Valley Stop. I stayed there for a few hours, I'm not kidding. It was raining pretty hard outside, but even if it's not, you'll love it, you'll enjoy it so much, I could talk about it forever. So those are all of my tips for hiking the West Highland Way in Scotland. It is a really beautiful trail. It has its brutal elements, but it's a very, very special place, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're safe out there, and I thank you so much for watching this video. Happy hiking.